Hello, hello. Welcome to day three of the 21 days for um, a self-judgment detox. And today's was, I judge myself by comparing myself to others in society. And then a big, ugh. And this is close to impossible not to do in our culture. And even in what I believe is the well-meaning personal development world, it's riddled with judgment. Like a lot of the pithy quotes and all that about, you know, um, Things like put your big girl pants on, be the first to forgive, you know, and I can, I, there's so many quotes that I could debunk, but it's, and on top of which we live in a culture and a society that's quite toxic. It's very patriarchal. It's also very toxic to, you know, it loves the superstars. And if you're not a superstar, then you're found wanting. And as I was saying, like in yesterday's video, I noticed Yesterday, I was just feeling so much joy and happiness watching birds. And and I noticed I had typically more of a joyful spirit for myself, which I don't very often because it, you know, I have to catch myself on what I focus on. And it was, um, and I, I do uh, Qigong and I was watching, he calls it Delightful December. And he gives you like a little thing to do each month and he goes notice something just delightful each day in December and it's a great practice but what we we're bombarded constantly with advertising and I say this all the time when you look at advertising what are they trying to sell you and how are they trying to sell it is it lifestyle marketing is it the bigger house the fancier car the this and there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff in and of itself. But if that's what we look at and think, oh, that's what's gonna make me happy, then that's the problem. And I was watching a guy early this morning and he was talking about money. He says, money just makes you more of who you are. You know, if you're a generous person, you're gonna be more generous. If you're a jerk, you're just gonna be a bigger jerk and all of those things. But these are all little ways we can compare ourselves. And then as women, we live in a culture that's um, very youth obsessed and women somehow are magically supposed to take the magic pill, alter their appearance to stay youthful looking instead of learning to embrace the aging process and um, and realizing every line on, our, line on our face psychosomatically tells a story. So that's enough of my monologue, let's tap, karate chop. Even though I really judge myself through comparison and comparison with others and with society. And whenever I compare, I lose one way or the other. Even though I judge myself using comparison to do it, that person's so much more successful than me. Oh, look how youthful she stays looking. How thin she is. Oh, look how rich they are. And I judge my low lights by other people's highlight reels. I choose to honor this truth right now. Even though I use comparison and it really abuses me. And it's hard not to in this culture I live in. Get caught up in comparison. I choose to honor this truth right now. all this comparison, all the ways I compare myself. And it's throughout the day. And advertising is set up to compare me, to show me what's missing in my life. And by feeling bad about that, I'll go after what they're offering. All this comparison 
and I'm programmed throughout the day. Every day. To do just that. And what if it could be possible to see this in a different way? What if the way I can start to shift this is to notice and catch myself in comparison mode? And how else I can catch it? is how am I feeling when I'm comparing myself? When I see some kind of advertising and it has me comparing, how do I feel? And what if my emotions are my barometer and giving me information that I can pay attention to. And if I'm feeling bad because somehow I'm missing something or not measuring up, to an insane culture standards? What if that's the perfect time to tap to interrupt it? And what if the more I do that over time, I'll notice I'm judging and comparing myself less and being kinder to myself naturally. And what if that makes all the difference? And take a breath. That's the biggest thing that I, I can suggest is you could use the mental noting like judging judging. I told this story many times before. One day I was hiking and all of a sudden I was paying attention to my thoughts and they were super like, it was all this comparison and stuff that was going on. And I was like, I just said the word abusing as mental noting. I just started to laugh because I realized like I'm abusing myself with my thoughts. And then not to abuse yourself for abusing yourself, but just to notice, wow, that monkey mind. And I call it the bully in my brain because it's a bully to me. And I, the more people I've worked with, it's like, that's a, that's a really bullying voice that's telling you what's wrong or what's missing. And, and you know by how you feel. And if you're feeling bad, that's your barometer. You could also use that saying, please heal my fear-based thoughts. Out of that, The Only Little Prayer You Need book by Deborah Engel. Please heal my fear-based thoughts about what's missing in my life. Please heal my fear-based thoughts about how I look. Please heal my fear-based thoughts about money. Um, and, or just do the mental noting. And use those little tools to help you interrupt it. Thanks for the topic, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for day four. Bye for now.